Okay, so the topic of today's video is bottle management. No, not those kind of bottles. Well, actually, come to think of it, maybe yes, those kind of bottles. What the heck, it might make things a little easier to explain. <sighs> okay, anyway, on to bottles. And what the heck is a bottle, you ask? Well, basically a bottle is a self-contained Windows environment. It's a set of folders that contains all the wine DLLs and other files that are necessary to make your applications run correctly. It's Crossover's way of making sure that the right wine files get associated with your application so that your app runs the way it should. It's also a way to make applications portable. If you install an application into a bottle and then turn that bottle into an archive, the archive can be moved around to a different machine, unpacked in the bottle manager, and then you've essentially reinstalled that application on the new machine without actually having to install the app itself. What this video shows you is an overview of the tools that we provide within Crossover for managing your bottles. It also helps explain the underlying file structure within Crossover that supports those bottles themselves. So with that said, let's take a look at bottles. The bottle manager is accessed by first running Crossover, then going to the Crossover menu and selecting Configure, Manage Bottles. The bottle management screen is divided into four separate tabs. The first, the bottle viewer, shows you which bottles you have installed on this particular machine. The next tab, Applications, shows you which applications are installed in each of the individual bottles. The Control Panel tab gives you configuration options for some of the applications that you'll find in your individual bottles, as well as configuration options around the version of wine that is contained in that particular bottle. And finally, the Advanced tab allows you to do things like turn bottles into archives and also reset the default bottle. So let's take a look at a fairly typical crossover installation, with two separate bottles in this case. The first bottle, Win98, was the default bottle that got installed on this machine when I first put a Windows application on it. The second one, MS Office, was one that I added later on. The Win98 bottle is the default bottle, and in it, we can see on the Applications tab, I have a copy of Internet Explorer 6.0. The MS Office bottle, for its part, has a copy of Office 2003 on it. So each of these bottles corresponds with a file structure on our Mac, and I'd like to show that to you now. If I go and open up a Finder, and then click on this particular user, if I then select Library, Application Support, Crossover, you'll see the main Crossover directory. One of the folders underneath Crossover is called Bottles, and not surprisingly, underneath that folder you'll find the files that correspond with these two bottles. Actually, you'll see three folders. The first one is called Default. All the default folder is is a pointer at whichever bottle is currently the default bottle on your Crossover installation. If I right-click on that default folder and then do a Get Info, it will tell me that it's actually pointing towards the Win98 bottle. That means means that if a user installs Windows software underneath Crossover and doesn't make any other changes, by default that software will be installed in the Win98 bottle. Each of the bottles has an identical file structure as well. If we open it up, we'll find a number of configuration variables as well as some subfolders. One of these, entitled Drive C, is sort of the surrogate C drive that would be on your Windows computer if this were Windows. Underneath that, you'll find two more folders, one called Program Files and the other called Windows. The Program Files subdirectory has all of your Windows applications in it that you have installed under Crossover into this particular bottle. The Windows folder has all of the Wine DLLs and other components that are needed to run those applications. Our MS Office bottle has an identical file structure. A Drive C folder, underneath of which you'll find a Windows folder that has all of the Wine components for this bottle, as well as a Program Files folder that has the copy of MS Office that's been installed. As you might imagine, a number of the things that we can do in our bottle management GUI have a direct impact on the file structure underneath. 
For instance, let's say that I don't like the name of this particular bottle anymore. I don't want to call it Win98. I could go into my bottle management UI, select the Win98 bottle, and rename it to the IE6. The UI tells me that it's busy renaming it, and once that operation is completed, if we go down and look at the finder, you'll see that the name of the folder has been renamed to IE6 as well. You'll notice that the bottle manager did another nice thing for us. Having renamed that folder structure, the launcher for IE that's now sitting on our dock is dead. It points at a structure that no longer exists. So what the bottle manager does is open up a new folder that has a fresh launcher icon that points at the newly renamed bottle. So we can drag that down to our dock and Internet Explorer will work for us again from the dock. Speaking of launchers, let's talk about them for a minute. There can sometimes be confusion as to where those launchers actually live, so let's go out and take a look for them in the file system. At first glance, you might think that they would be saved under the bottle substructure someplace, but if you go out into your finder and take a look for them inside the bottles folders, you won't find them anywhere in there. And this is a result of some of the development guidelines for the Mac platform. Actually, where they're stored is under this individual user's application. So if I go into the finder, click on Video Dude, and then click on His Applications, we'll find a folder called Crossover. Underneath Crossover we'll find the launcher for Internet Explorer and then a further subfolder for the MS Office applications with all of their launchers. One of the things that makes bottles so cool is the fact that they're portable. Using the bottle manager you can create what's known as an archive. An archive takes the entire folder structure of a single bottle and turns it into one compressed file. The archive file can then be taken to another crossover machine and restored using the bottle manager. When you restore that archive, what essentially happens is you now install all the applications that are within that bottle on the new machine without the hassle of having to go through the actual installation process again. Let's see how it works. Let's say that I want to make an archive of my Internet Explorer 6 install. To do that, I select the IE6 bottle in my bottle manager and then click on the Advanced tab. Next, click the button that says Make Archive. It'll ask you where you want to put your archive file. I'm just going to go ahead and select the default location of document. Crossover shows me that the archive is being made. This shouldn't take all that long because Internet Explorer isn't all that big an application. Once the archive is created, we can go down into the Finder, take a look at Video Dudes Documents, and lo and behold, there is our IE6 CX archive file. Next, let's see how we restore an archive. I'll just go up to my bottle manager, select the IE6 bottle, and delete it by clicking on the minus sign underneath the bottle screen. Once it's done deleting the bottle, you'll notice that if we open up the finder and go into application support crossover, that the bottle in question has indeed been erased from the file structure on the computer. Restoring a bottle is pretty much the same thing in reverse. On the Advanced tab, just click the Restore from Archive button, and then go into the Finder and select the archive that you want to restore. Crossover then restores the archive in question and turns it back into a bottle. Once it tells us that it's completed, we can go into the Finder, take a look under Application Support, and under the bottle subdirectories, sure enough, we'll find an IE6 bottle put back there. And that pretty much concludes Bottle Management 101. I'm not going to bother going into the Control Panel tab at this time. Frankly, the functionality there is fairly advanced and also can be fairly dangerous. You shouldn't mess with this unless you really understand how Wine works on a computer, or if you're following the explicit instructions of our support team. That said, hopefully this video has shown you how bottles can make your life a little bit easier. Thank you for your time and attention, and thank you for your interest in Crossover.